Welcome to Lauren Start Stormblood. <laughs> it's gonna be a new a new playlist on my YouTube, a new a new chapter's beginning in my playing of video games. Um, yeah, so uh, we wrapped up the post Heaven's Word content, um, and the biggest biggest change for me was that I can apparently no longer talk about. I can no longer call Ida hot pants because she's not Ida. She's somebody else who has an entirely new story. Oops, I accidentally hit the button. We're gonna watch the, the video, the opening cinematic for Stormblood, which I haven't seen yet. Amano, of course, gets top milling. Imatsu. This is the beginning of a new story arc. So you should- oh! See, that looks like Dancer. But I think Dancer didn't come in this. Wait, that's Lise! God, she's cool looking. She gets a new outfit, and it's awesome. I don't know who- I don't think I know who that is. Yes. Oh, that's the Warrior of Light stand-in. Okay, thank you, Bismaya. Um... Must be a sparring match. Oh no, they animated her face as an Laker! Sending out shockwaves because of our silly. Wait. Oh, we're going to someplace really interesting. Visually distinct from anywhere else we've been. Are we going to Doma? That's all, amigo. That's all, amigo. That's all amigo. It says all amigo. And then, and then, okay, there's Garland. That's Garlemald. That's the Empire. Are we going across the sea? Are we going to Doma? Are we going to Doma? Are we going to Doma? There's another continent. That's Doma! Yes, they are going to do both of them! Why are they underwater? I'm so glad they're doing it. Wait. This is a different location name. Unless, like, Doma is the continent and has multiple cities. Or on. Overkill. Oh my god, do you hear this music? Birds! I just got a new bird to fly on. Yoshi P! He's brilliant. Go, 
Okay, so that's definitely Lise in the front. But I'm not sure who everyone else is there. Okay. So I'm gonna lo log in. By the way, if you want to play with me and you can, okay, well, we're gonna wait around for a moment. I'm L'Oreal Loala on Ultros, <laughs> as you can see. Apparently my connection is poor. All right. No, it's fine. I'm not worried. Um, so this gives me a minute to talk. I hope you don't mind. You got the peanut gallery as I was playing through that. I meant to do more of like a little preamble before I dived, dove in, but I accidentally hit the button to start the cutscene. <laughs> earlier than intended, which I feel is an appropriately Lauren thing to do. So welcome to Stormblood, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if anyone is watching who hasn't watched me stream before. Um, I know that there are some people watching who have watched me stream but haven't seen this game before. Oh, hello, Dosmea. Dosmea is just over here chilling. Hold on. No. No! Ah, okay. Hold on. Dosmea is a regular who is hanging out here in chat. Okay, we're gonna go continue the story. Let's get out of here. Let's go into the Rising Stones. And then we're gonna talk a little... No, 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 a little bit. Yeah, well, I, if I hadn't known that was the Warrior of Light, I would have been like, well, this is clearly not a bad guy because they're just sparring. Um, so... In case anyone doesn't know anything about Final Fantasy XIV, this is the very brief, very brief summary of XIV, its origin, and what we're about to dive into now. Apologies to everyone who knows this, but if nothing else, perhaps you will be entertained by the particular manner in which I describe things. Um, so, Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 was bad. Like, just bad. Just, it was a bad game. And it was so bad that they were like, well, we can't keep this going, it's awful. Um, and they brought in Yoshi P. And Yoshi P was like, I can fix this. How do I fix this? So what they did is in the context of the story, the bad guys summon a moon that has Bahamut on it to come crashing down into the planet and destroy everything. And at the last minute, it doesn't destroy everything, it just destroys some things. Um, but, uh, on the game side of things, they like reworked the game. Like they were trying to fix it during the end of the 1.0 stuff. And then they, they like blew up the planet with, by dropping the moon into it. And then they were like, okay, we've made this new game. It's, 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 it's building on the story of the previous one, which was terrible. We're gonna do our best, but we're still tying up loose ends and dealing with that mess. So that's 2.0, a realm reborn. See, cause the realm got smashed and then it got remade. Um, both in the game world and outside, like in a meta level. Um, so I played through a Realm Reborn. I did not play 1.0 because they'd already dropped the moon long before I started playing the game. Um, and my friends played the game because they think it's fun and they like the story. And I was like, you know, I'm moving far away from everyone. I'll play the MMO that they play. I don't like MMOs. Like, I don't have any interest in this, but sure. Realm Reborn is not good. Story-wise, it's not good, <laughs> and I didn't like it or the characters or anything, um, but I enjoyed playing with my friends. So I would like give all the characters ridiculous nicknames, like Hot Pants, <laughs> um, and didn't really pay much attention, but like the kind of post-game stuff of A Realm Reborn got more interesting and complex, but I also didn't like what they did with the story. Like, they basically seem like they kill your entire your entire cast. Like just like rocks fall, everyone dies. And I was like, you don't deserve to make me sad over these characters because you haven't earned that. But okay, everyone tells me the next expansion, 3.0, Heaven's Word is actually good. I don't know if I believe that it could possibly be good. So I, so I load up Heaven's Word. It's like night and day. It's like there was like a prequel that, or like a first game in a series that isn't good. And then you get to the second game in the series and it's great. And you're like, oh, they were still dealing with the mess of 1.0 when they made 2.0. And then 3.0 came out. Um, and that was Heaven's Word, which is this like super awesome political story of like the like elves and the dragons who've been at war for a thousand years. And there's also like intrigue with like different groups in the elven city. Like there's like, you know, classism and you know 
people perpetuating the war so that they can maintain power. There's like religious zealotries, really interesting stuff. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. This is good. There was a major character death and I didn't see it coming and I was crying and crying. And it was surprisingly, given how much I did not like A Realm Reborn as a story, like Heavensward was really good. Um, and I beat it and people had been saying, Lauren, you need to stream Shadowbringers, which is okay. So Heavensward is 3.0, Shadowbringers is 5.0, and everyone's like, Shadowbringers 5.0 is one of the best Final Fantasies ever made, so you should stream it. And I was like, before I get to that, I should probably figure out how to stream an MMO because it's different than streaming a regular game. So I was like, what if I did that with you? Notice there's a number I didn't say that's 4.0, which is Stormblood. For some reason, they have Stormblood and then Shadowbringers because they hate my inability to remember things. They're like, we're going to get you, Lauren. Um, but uh, so so I was like, well, why don't I stream Stormblood? Um, and then I can figure things out by the time I get to Shadowbringers. But then I was like, you know, I'm, I'm in like the lead up to Stormblood. Anyway, I'll just do a few streams figuring out what I'm doing. So I've had now five streams that are kind of like pre-Stormblood. I'm gonna say Shadowbringers when I mean Stormblood and vice versa. I'm so sorry. I have to use mnemonic devices to remember anything. And those two are really unfairly done for me. <laughs> um, but uh, so what we're doing here, for anyone who hasn't played an MMO before, welcome. I had never played an MMO before too. So uh, a lot of the terminology and the way things work is very new to me. Um, each expansion is a full contained story that in itself can stand alone although it ties into the things that came before and drops pieces that will be picked up and what comes next um, but it, it takes place in a different like it has a different location it has a new set of characters that are central to that particular story um, so we wrapped up the like cold Iceland elves versus dragons story and some of those characters are going to continue over into this. And if you have not seen any Final Fantasy XIV beforehand, um, hopefully you'll be able to kind of pick up and we can give you like a little shorthand about who some of these characters are. Um, but a lot of the characters that are going to be developed in this, if Heaven's Word is any indication and having seen what they're doing in the pre-Stormblood stuff, the, these characters are ones we don't know as well. So we will get to know them over the course of the next expansion which is the one that we're doing now, which we just watched the intro movie for, which I hadn't seen before. I'm very excited about it. Uh, do you mind if I talk about that a little bit before we dive in? <laughs> um, so this being a Final Fantasy, there is an evil empire and the evil empire is a Magitek using evil empire because they love me. They, they named things in a way that doesn't love me, but they love me and they're like, we know you love Final Fantasy VI, Lauren, so we will give you a Magitek using Empire. I haven't been thrilled with what they've done with the Empire, most of what they've done with the Empire, but there's good bits and pieces so I could see them doing things that I really like with the Empire, and I suspect that there's going to be a lot of the Empire in uh, in Stormblood. I have to like pause and be like, which one? It's not Shadowblood. It's not Stormbringers. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to get this. <laughs> we're going to get this. Um, but so there's an evil empire that's been trying to take over things. And like there's other stuff going on. Like the elves are busy fighting the dragons in like the northern lands, like like in the ice place. Like so they don't they don't need to worry about the empire. They've got their hands full. But the empire keeps trying to take over various other places and has in fact successfully invaded and taken over a lot of places. So we are on a con continent called Eorzea which has a bunch of city-states in it, um, uh, one of which has fallen to the Empire, Alamigo, which if you watched me get all excited about the video, um, Alamigo is probably going to be our first location, but apparently we're going to spend a lot of time in another location that has been attacked by, but not, I think, completely occupied by the Empire. Um, so where we are, where we've been, is in one of the other city-states on the continent of Eorzea, which um, which uh, has taken in refugees, somewhat unwillingly, um, 
Oh, Domo's occupied in the race. Well, we'll figure that out when we get there. Um, I just, I, I'm guessing because we saw something to do with Doma, and I don't, I have, I have literally no way of knowing because I know that we had refugees from Doma, but I don't know that we've ever had people in conversations I've paid attention to in this game actually talk about what happened. So we'll figure that out when we get there. Um, but, so where was I? Um, sorry, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of like giving you a lot of different pieces here, but um, the, the big things that you need to know are that the Alamegans, whose, whose, uh, whose uh, city-state has been thoroughly occupied by, um, by the Empire, many of them are, have fled here and are refugees, but they're not treated very well and things are rough and they want to go back home, they want to rescue their, their people. Um, and so there's been, there's been a whole lot of um, conflict. And right now we are getting to the point where like, we are, we are gonna go to Alamigo and rescue it, ish. We're, we're going there and we're going to see what we can do about it. Um, but there is also this other city across the sea, Doma, which has been occupied, attacked, raised, I don't know. The empire has messed them up and they also had refugees that came to Eorzea. Um, and all of the stuff leading up to, uh, leading up to Stormblood, I have to think every time I say it, I'll get it. Um, but the things leading up to Stormblood, um, had characters who are connected to Alamigo and characters that are connected to Doma involved. Um, and I was concerned that they were going to not, because the Domans left at the end of that, they went to go back to Doma, leaving us with the Alamigo, or the Al Alamigans to go to Alamigo. Um, and I was concerned that they were going to separate these stories out, which at this point I have some faith in their storytelling ability because they did really great things in Heaven's Word and building up to Stormblood. Um, but I had concerns because you have two, two different and similar, almost parallel situations. You've got two um, invaded territories with refugees who wish to go and rescue their people, free their homeland, and overcome the empire. Um, and if you choose not to deal with those in parallel, you have to, uh, like they, they'd have to, they'd have to have a reason to do that. Because for me, seeing these two stories that have parallels, if you don't use their parallels together, you kind of cheapen them. Whereas if you use them together, um, you could do really interesting things playing off them off of each other. Um, so I'm really glad to see that this is going to be the Doma expansion. Also because if the Empire is the big bad, because in the previous one, the dragons were the big bad. When the Empire was there, it caused some trouble. Yeah, 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 they messed with dragons. Um, but the dragons were the big bad. Nidhogg, specifically. One particular dragon who I hate very much was the big bad, but here the Empire is going to be the big bad. And so it makes sense to have uh, Doma, which in Final Fantasy VI, spoilers for Final Fantasy VI, um, the Empire destroys like genocidal levels. They murder every single person from Doma with one exception. Everybody else dies. They are poisoned. Like, you know, civilians, children, everyone perishes. Um, and uh, and so like if, if that's sort of what's happened with Doma in this game, uh, that would make sense because they do their references. They, they take they take things kind of from the other games and they make a version of it that fits in this world. Like the floating continent from Final Fantasy VI appears at the end of Heaven's Word. And I took one look at it and I was like, is this the floating continent? Are there going to be obnoxious teleporter puzzles? And there were. Um, because they did such a good job uh, making it... I could identify what it was. It's, it's very good. So I'm really interested to see whether I have some idea of what's going on with Doma and the Empire because I know VI. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so this is just like me kind of info dumping a little bit and talking about my thoughts so far diving into this, but like I can say with confidence now having seen this video and kind of knowing what's coming up that we are about to, we are about to take on the empire, um, and potentially lead potentially two different groups of people united against the empire, um, which will be interesting also. 
the uh, there had been a, an alliance among the surviving city states on Eorzea that had kind of fallen apart. The like the elves who were fighting the dragons were like, you know, peace out. We gotta go fight the dragons. You guys go do your own thing. And they kind of squabbled doing their own thing too. Um, but we've we've patched it up. We got the elves back um, because the perfect man. Emmerich, who is in charge of them, was like, okay, I will rejoin the Eorzean Alliance. Everyone is like, yeah, no, we're going to do this. Um, so there is potential for a unified front against the Empire, which frankly is what it's going to take. Like the, it's, it's, it's been rather apparent that the Empire outguns us? Hi, Will. Hi, Willow. There's Will and Willow. You don't know because Will's name is not Will here, but he's also Will, but there's a Willow. So see, it's, I think it's funny. Look, Emmerich, Emmerich is is a perfect person. He just he just is. It's not my fault that I say he's perfect. We all agree, right? Um, we probably won't be seeing a ton of him, which is kind of a shame. But I'm looking forward to meeting our new cast. So in Final Fantasy XIV, Heaven's Word, Alphino, this little little fellow right here, um, was one of our main main characters. Um, he was kind of the central figure of the story um, and it was his character arc, his growth from everyone died because of his hubris to then like actually growing into like a mature, um, intelligent and uh, more reserved and thoughtful leader in training um, that he is. Now his, uh, his story is not, I wouldn't say it's at an end, but that arc has come to a satisfying conclusion. So we get to see him, like, show his growth at the end of the post Heaven's Word stuff. Um, so here Alphano is saying, so, so a character that has been in the game since 1.0, apparently, who I really didn't like, who I called Hot Pants, because she wears hot pants, or at least wore hot pants, and I didn't like her. I found her annoying. She was supposed to be funny. She kind of had this like unfunny bantery relationship with another character that I didn't really like either. Um, uh, turns out, big reveal, she, the person we thought she was, um, actually died years ago. And so the younger sister has been impersonating that person for years. Um, and so she finally decided because the partner in crime like her, her her teammate sacrificed himself to stop a bad thing from happening um and so she's she's like you know i'm 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 devastated the one person who knew i really was is dead so i'm gonna come come clean to the rest of you and i'm gonna tell you all that i'm actually ida's little sister which i'm excited about because i didn't like ida but now they have a completely clean slate to establish this new character um which is good because she was kind of dumb and, 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 and supposed to be funny and she's supposed to now be one of like the, the central characters for an emotionally resonant story um, and you can't you, as, I, as I said while I was streaming the end of Heaven's Word, post Heaven's Word content, you, you can't build a story like that on a character like that, you have to make changes um, and so I think that they what they did I mean, they're not above killing characters to get a clean break so that's what they did. Just like they blew up a planet to get a clean, clean break. Um, they killed Ida and revealed that she'd actually been Lise all along. Um, so that's what's going on right now is all of our like little crew who was all part of our like superhero team, basically. We're like a vigilante superhero nerd team. <laughs> um, but we just found out that one of our members is not the person we thought she was. And so here, the word of that big reveal is getting around in the team. So... Alphano's twin sister, they used to have the exact same outfit. I'm so glad they changed that. But she is going to, I think, fill the role that, uh, fill the role that Alphano filled in Heaven's Word, where he was much, he was, he was immature, made bad decisions, and needed to grow up at the beginning of that arc, and then did over the course of that arc. Alice here. She's a red mage like me. We're very cool. Um, but she's hot-headed, impulsive, thinks she knows things better than she does, which was one of Alphano's problems. So I think that it is time for her to step in and be the central twin in this story, and she will have her character growth, but we'll find out. They've been putting her more and more central to the story um, as we work our way to Stormblood, which is what they did with Heaven's Word. They put Alphano more and more to the front, so. All right. 
so there's no voice acting in a lot of the scenes. Apologies. I don't read things out loud on stream. I may read them out loud for emphasis if I find them very interesting, but um, I think I have her outfit. I think they gave me that. Um, yes, so the wall between uh, the wall between Eorzea, the Eorzean Alliance, um, and the Empire uh, has, has fallen. And so we really have to fight them because we can't we can't block them. So, um, oh good, I'm glad there'll be more voice acting because the voice acting is actually quite good. Um, so we're gonna go join the Alamegans in fighting the Empire. The Domans are gonna are, they've gone off to do their thing, but we're gonna wind up linking up with them. It looks like we might spend more time in Doma than Alamigo, which is interesting. Um, just judging by the, the preview video, so we'll see. All right. Cutscene? Okay. I'm gonna turn my brightness up on my screen so I can see this better. So this is the wall. <gasps> Pippin! Okay, so if you don't know Final Fantasy XIV, there are different races in this game. I call So there's the ones I call the elves. They're the Elizen. They're not technically elves. There's the Hure. They're not technically human. They're human. Um, there's the Lalafell, who are these little bitty ones. Pippin. So Pippin is a full-grown man. And he is very serious. He is a Lalafell Bishonin. His, he, like, tosses his hair and sparkles. Like, literally sparkles when you meet him. Um, but just, yes, he is built like a four-year-old human. He is a full-grown man. His dad is a rogue, and he's a giant. Is he a rogue? Or is he just really big? Actually, now that I think about it. What is Raban other than enormous? You have to realize I was playing as a Lollafell the last time I hung out. And when you're a Lollafell, as I changed my character from a Lollafell to a here. When you're a Lollafell, everyone is big so there's just big and big and more big so <laughs> okay so he's a big highlander here yeah i didn't think he was a row when i was thinking about it i was like actually um he's enormous though so he's giant but he's the adopted father of this little man but pippin is fantastic and one thing that i love is that you take pippin seriously as a character despite his stupid outfit why are you dressed like that pippin i don't know. It's like he's missing half his shirt in the most unfortunate way. Um, but, uh, all right. So he is a leader. All of these people in their funny little raincoats and rain hats are the official militias of the different city states. You can tell which city state they're from based on the color. Oh, here he is. This is his dad. I wish like, they just established. They're both so cool. So Ravon is like the like general and like second in command kind of of one of the city states. Um, but he's originally from Alamingo, which has been invaded by the Empire. Um, and actually, a person who stirred up so much trouble trying to provoke, uh, a, trying to provoke a war and then unleash an unspeakable evil against the Empire that would probably have blown everyone else up too, um, was Ra one of Ravon's friends who had previously betrayed us and cut off Ravon's arms. Arm. Just one. He has one left. So there's a lot. There's a lot. And I'm sorry if you already know this and I'm trying to explain it and you're like, yes, Lord, we know this. Like, this is me awkwardly giving you Cliff's notes my best memories. You'll notice that sometimes chat has to remind me of things. My memory is not 100% and also there's a lot and I didn't pay that much attention to a realm reborn. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, um, and if you don't know and you're kind of confused, like if you have questions like who is this, who is that, I don't think you even have enough pieces to hold on to yet. But if you have questions as we go, we'll try to fill you in on things. So, um, but here we are at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Pippin is so proud. He's so proud of his dad. The bull of Alamigo is his dad. So he's basically saying, like, I learned I learned to fight against you, Dad, so there's nothing the Empire can do. <laughs> I love Pippin. I love Roman. Huh. 
Yeah, so we had an epic fight here with Ravon's former friend who betrayed us. So he is going to be he perhaps a little emo about that and also a little emo about the whole state of everything. I'm sorry, Ravon. This is a rough time. What is going through your head right now, sir? Ah, Ilbert is the friend who betrayed him. And yet he understands, I think, where some of where Elbert was coming from with that. Which I think is a really neat detail, actually. That says a lot about Ravon. This is the man who cut his arm off and would have killed him and everyone he loved. But he understands that he did it because he loved. He did it because he loved and wanted to free his people. Hi, Game Brass friends! This is going to be spoilers if you haven't played the very beginning of Stormblood. So this is the Empire. You can probably tell this is the Empire because it looks super Imperial, but also because they wear really dumb armor. They wear the dumbest armor. It makes it hard to take them seriously sometimes. <sighs> Hold on, I gotta. What have you been? Have you been? Have you been Game Brass streaming? If anyone doesn't already know the Game Brass, please follow the Game Brass. They are one of my favorite video game music groups and a bunch of my pals. Um, they're delightful and fun. They play game music on brass instruments. I know you wouldn't be able to guess that from the name, so I have to translate that to you. Um, they do really good music. We collaborate on stuff occasionally, but mostly we're just friends. And Oh my god! <laughs> Will, you should check out their stuff. They have like... Final Fantasy and Zelda. Oh, oh, Will and Danny, you guys both do um, Zelda randomizer speedruns. You're both good friends of mine. You can appreciate the same good things in games and stuff. Oh, that's that's awesome, Danny. That's super cool. I, I want to play Link's Awakening on Switch. I will do that at some point. Yeah, I've mentioned to both Danny and Will. Sorry, I will get back to the game. Danny and Will are like two of my very good friends. And to each of them I've mentioned, oh, I've got another friend who does that thing you do. So now they are in my chat together. They can say hello. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Okay, so here we are in the heart of the empire. No, we're not in the heart of the empire. This is the Viceroy. That's not the, empire, the emperor. So the Viceroy, if I understand this from vague memories of history class, that's the person you installed be in charge of the place you've taken over. So presumably we're in Alamigo, which might explain why the patterns on the floor don't look imperial. Because I was like, this is strange, because I know that this is an imperial base, and yet looking at the patterns on the floor, they look like something Eorzean. Um, and these statues like look more like a desert place kind of statues rather than imperial stuff um, but well, let me go is the desert city um, that is occupied so this is this is an officer reporting back to the guy in charge of the occupied territory that we seek to free um so man that is a cool looking cool looking throne thing but it looks like the statues it looks like statues are missing in this room omega Oh, right. So, Raubon's friend summoned this unspeakable evil to try to take out the Empire. And we had to get uh, forbidden technology to send after it. So they had a mecha versus summon battle that was... I, things flew at each other and were invincible, which like my brain completely cannot process. Um, but who knows where they went? The Empire wants to go after them and get and get their, their forbidden powers, because that's what the Emperor does. Um, but, uh, uh, trying to figure out if we should, <laughs> so this is going to tell us a lot about the Viceroy. So the question is here that's like, um, so these big forbidden weapons broke a lot of things. Can we maybe not just go looking for them and maybe fix things that are broken? So my guess is that the Vice War is going to be like, no, who cares about this stupid place? We want the weapon so the Emperor likes us. Which then will establish to us that he's very evil. If he defies my expectations and is like, yes, good, we should definitely make sure we take care of our people and this, this, this location. But absolutely, we must keep finding the thing too. 
then I will be like, oh, he's not all evil. Which they have established that some of the Imperials care about their people. Some of the Imperials are not all evil, which I very much appreciate that they've done. But I suspect this guy's going to be all bad. I think we've seen him before, but I don't remember. Look at his stupid hat! Look at his stupid hat! He didn't say anything. Maybe his silence is his answer. But do you see? Shinryu. Okay. So, Lucy, if you're talking about this franchise, as in Final Fantasy XIV, you have to realize that this is building upon hours and hours. This is basically the third game. Technically the fourth game in a series. So it's so it's complicated. Um, none of the rest of the Final Fantasies have anything to do with this. This game references them or pulls inspiration from bits of them. But Final Fan each Final Fantasy game stands alone. So this is like... Ig ignore any thought you had of Final Fantasies 1 through 13 or Final Fantasy 15 or any non-numbered ones. Um, none of them, none of them have anything to do with this. They're all independent games. Um, in fact, they tend to be different genres. Like, you'll have the steampunk one, that's Final Fantasy VI. You have the, the cyberpunk one, which is Final Fantasy VII. Um, and, and yeah, so in this case, Final Fantasy XIV is like a series of games. And we are playing 4.0 right now. <laughs> 1.0 is no longer available, and I think 2.0 is bad. But 3.0 is great. 4.0 probably will be good, and 5.0 is supposed to be amazing. So, we'll see. <laughs> um, so, this guy, he knows information his goon doesn't know. Um, but also, he didn't even say anything to this guy, so this guy knows that he's not interested in rebuilding things. So he's so evil, he doesn't even get the chance to say an evil thing, because he doesn't have to, because we can assume he's evil. <laughs> Thanks, McMoofles. Well, welcome. Hello. This guy has... wait. Oh no! He's an evil Bashonin. That's the worst. Okay, that's how we know. The far edge of fate, the road begins anew. The heroes look to eastern skies. There we go, this is gonna be a poem. No? Okay. Yes, my friends who I regularly play with say that the main antagonist of Stormblood is, a uh, is, a uh, polarizing. So we will see what I think. Alright, so they're taking the wall and we are waiting on that. Even my- a lot of the people that I know, like, they like Stormblood, but apparently some of them, even the ones who didn't like, who loved Stormblood, did not like the bad guys. So we'll see what I think. Everyone is curious. Alphano is not a man. I'm sorry. He is a teenager. He's, like, 16. I'm sorry, Alphano. Although you have grown up a great deal in the past expansion, I will give you absolute credit for that. But you're still a kid. I'm sorry. Okay. The question is, how will the Empire respond to the disappearance of Omega and the Prime? They're gonna go hunting after them. They want super weapons. That's literally what they do. That's why they got Magitek, if I remember correctly. Oh, I didn't see you there. Forgive me. Word from Bailsar's wall is proving long in the coming, and my mind cannot help but stray to grim places. He even sounds more mature. Alphano, a message from the Alliance. This is our, our administrative assistant, Tataru. She, she's also our costume designer. She's great. I love her. It's about time. Pray summon the others at once. Yes, sir. We are working hard. It's distracting us from Papalimo's sacrifice. So here is our superhero club. General Oldin reports that his forces have secured the breach in Bailsar's wall. Woo! I mean, we all knew this was coming, but... 
Oh, she still has the same animation. And what are the Primal and Omega? But it's weird. Primal Babysitters Club, not not untrue. I will, I will, I can, I can give you the rundown of who everyone in this room is if you want, like the Lauren summary version of them. Ishtola here is the smart, dryly sassy, brilliant sorceress scholar. A lot of them are scholars. There is still no sign of either at this time. He writes that they will begin a more thorough investigation shortly. This is going to go badly. Because the thing is, we don't want the Emperor... We don't want the Empire to have its hands on either the Forbidden Primal or the Forbidden Super, super Weapon Technology thing. Like, neither one of those is good to have in the Emperor Empire's hands. Like, the Empire is already plenty of trouble. <laughs> um... And, as expected, he wishes to petition the aid of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. You don't say. As expected. So this is the new character who has been impersonating her big sister for the past several years. So she took her helmet off. She had, like, a little, like, like hat thingy with, like, a little mask thing. So she takes that off and is like, hello, I'm beautiful and blonde and not the character you've been calling Hot Pants. She's still wearing the hot pants. I know she's going to change because I saw in the video she was wearing a different outfit that was much cooler, which is good. Um, so. The Alliance's decision to capture a part of Balesar's wall is open to interpretation. Is it so? The wall serves to demarcate Imperial territory, Alamigo included, from the rest of Eorzea. To an observer, the Alliance's actions could be seen as a prelude to invasion. So let's invade. Indeed. And the Alliance leaders have no wish to be branded invaders. Mostly because I think they don't want the Empire to come down on their heads. You're saying they won't fight for Alamigo? Even after everything that's happened? Again, she's Alamigan. Um, and again, Alamigo is the occupied territory that this is all about at this point. Not without the consent of her people, no. Make no mistake, Lise. The Alliance is in complete agreement that the Empire must be purged from Eorzea. However, they will not set foot in Gear Abania until they have formally secured the consent and cooperation of the Alamegan opposition. Okay, actually that makes sense. They want to make sure that the people that they are going to rescue are okay with this. That, that makes sense. They would have us act as intermediaries. Ah, okay. Precisely. The Scions are uniquely qualified to serve in this capacity. That is to say, leases, given her personal connection to the Resistance. Who better than you to broker an agreement between the Alliance and the people of Alamigo? Assuming you are willing, of course. Yeah, I think that the goal is to not be liberators. I think the goal is to help them overthrow the Empire and let them help them free themselves. Um, hopefully. But, I mean, the thing is, like, for all that there are bad people in positions of power in Eorzea, the actual leaders themselves are not, so... Of course I am. You know I'd like nothing more. As for who should accompany you on said diplomatic mission, <laughs> I had a mind to volunteer myself. Actually, that's a good choice. He learned a little bit about diplomacy from hanging around Emmerich, as I've said before. Um, I think that a lot of his like growing leadership skills come from the influence of Emmerich. Well, that covers the talking part. <laughs> But you just know there'll be trouble along the way. Are you available? <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry. Alphano is probably not going to be able to defend everybody. No. He's fine as long as he's not having to be in the front row. Um. Of course. Oh, I dyed my hair her color, by the way. Thanks. It means a lot knowing you'll be there. I too shall accompany you. Such endeavors are seldom hampered by a surfeit of healers. Oh, I guess she's a healer. She's some sort of a caster. I don't know. Sorcery? Healing sorcery. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good point. Allow me to offer my services as well. Kryle is one of my favorite characters. Um, again, she's like the size and shape of a four-year-old. 
but she is super cool. She's really smart and funny and 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 just 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 great. I love I love Kryal. And she and Ishtola are like old old friends and classmates, I think. I have spent quite enough time here of late, so I'll be coming. But we will need someone to keep an eye on things. Your Angers? Thank her. I trust you have no objections. Your Angers. <laughs> None, my lady. Gladly shall I continue to serve as caretaker of the Waking Sands, and there keep watch for signs of primal and Asian activity both. So I didn't like this guy. I thought he was super boring and kind of annoying because he had this ridiculous way of talking um, in A Realm Reborn. Um, and he was barely in Heaven's Word, but like they showed enough to be like, oh, oh, he's like working with the like the existential bad guys because there's like the evil empire, but then there's also the like representatives of darkness trying to destroy reality. So like, that kind of bad guys. And I saw him like um, he seemed to be scheming with them. And I was like, this is not good. Not only do I not like him, but he's going to betray me. Um, but then it turns out we found out super spoilers very recently we found out that he was actually triple playing like doing like four dimensional chess craziness um to manipulate events to try to save as many as pe people as possible and get some balance between light and darkness to have a fighting chance against the existential evil so like he's actually really great like Fantastic. Sorry, Yuri Anjay, for everything that I said complaining about you for the past several years. I actually like you now. Um, I was, so I play, I play this game with a couple of friends right before I stream. Like, we, we play through dungeons and stuff. Um, and I was talking to them. I was complaining about Yuri Anjay's outfit because I want him to get, I want him to get a new costume. And I said that it's like a, it's like a party city, like Halloween store Friar Tuck costume. <laughs> That's what I feel he looks like here. Um. As capable as my learned friend undoubtedly is, there are some troubles that may prove too much for a single scion, on account of which I mean to stay. So Thancred in 2.0 was a very, very flat um, archetype. He was, he, was, he was a largely without distinction version of my favorite charming rogue with a heart of gold. Um, so I liked him. He wasn't interesting, but I liked him a lot. But then he, then the, the person he loved um, died and he got really, really sad for all of Heaven's Word. But then, uh, then they got to have like some final closure and now he's no longer sad all the time, but he's, he's still kind of coming into whatever version of himself he's going to be. Um, so he's staying behind. They're like, we cannot bring the entire party on this new adventure. So. It is settled then. Let us each see to our preparations. I'd like to see what Thancred does, um, and I'm curious to see what they do with Yorianger in the long run, but I'm glad that those two are the ones that they're leaving behind, even though I like Thancred's type. Um, Thancred has had enough moments in the sun um, that he can he can take a back seat, and Yorianger, I think they're building... I bet he's going to come up in Shadowbringers, I guess. And that occupies everybody. Sataru, of course, is going to stay because she's got secretary work to do. She's she's like our secretary and our treasurer and our mom and our seamstress costume designer. Like, she's multi-talented. Okay. So MMOs are kind of awkward in the way that they do storytelling. And I apologize to everyone for that. It doesn't lend itself as well to smooth storytelling the way a regular JRPG would. But we're going to do our best. Okay, so Elise is excited that we're gonna maybe maybe free her people. Oh, that's right. There was somebody who gotten super super wounded and came to let us know that bad stuff was happening. I'm glad that she's okay. All right, Alphano. We're gonna have a handoff between the twins, I guess, of who is the central character. Ready, my friend. Well then, Tataru, I leave the Rising Stones in your capable hands. The Rising Stones is the name of our home base. Prior to that. Don't worry, Alphano. I'll see that the place is still standing when you come back. Good, good. That's an improvement over the Waking Sands, our previous place. Oh, I thought the dome 
Prince had left already. What are you doing here? Mistress Yishtola has unfolded all. You are bound for Girabanya? Aye. The Alliance would have us make contact with the Alamegan resistance as soon as possible. Okay, the Waking Sands was standing, but the people inside it were not. They got massacred. It begins then. As soon it shall in Doma, if the gods are good. Tis but a pity it must be now. I am sorry that we shall not be present to fight beside you in the battles to come. You have stood with us countless times, Lady Yugiri. Pray do not apologize. They are from Doma, which is the other occupied territory. Then let us thank you instead. You and yours stood with us from the first, when we came to this land as refugees in search of sanctuary. Which was one of the first moments that I actually started paying attention to the game. I really enjoyed that part. Loath well am I done. to think what might have become of my people, had you not extended to us the hand of friendship. We will never forget. This I solemnly swear. So she's a ninja and he's a samurai. Much has changed since first you set foot on these shores. Revenant's toll stands as a testament to that. I'm sure your people will manage in your absence. Indeed. They have built a new home for themselves and no longer need me to shepherd them. The time has come for Kosetsu and I to return to our master. To our home. We'll go take care of that. I know how you feel. It's time I went home too. We'll go help the Domans later, maybe. Though our battlefields be a thousand He's miles so apart, long. our purpose is one. That all men hearken to the clarion call of freedom, of liberation, from Eorzea to the Far East, that they may rise up and cast down the curse of Garlemald. So what I love is that the game actually calls out the fact that Gosetsu shouts all of his dialogue, and then occasionally he doesn't shout, just for effect. I like Take care, you hear me? When all of this is over, we're going to celebrate, together. Just you wait. He's so I big. should like that very much. Fare you well. There, you get used to cutscenes where characters just like turn and walk off. That's like how cutscenes end in this game. It's a bit awkward, but you get used to it. Malms is our measurement of distance for some reason. All right. See, this is what I mean. They're gonna walk off. Oh, sh okay, 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 good. Lisa's about to get a new outfit. This is what happens. Tataru makes new outfits for people. I. I've, I've picked up on this. This is a pattern now. It has happened enough times. She even did this for my character. I think that this is how Tataru deals with her anxiety. Okay. Well, that is totally not the outfit that she was wearing in the intro thing. So maybe that wasn't her. I thought that was her. This is cool, though. I'm glad she's got something that's distinctly her. She's still... Note! She is still wearing the hot pants. <laughs> but at least it's... At least the... I think the top changed. Are these even different boots? I'm not sure. She's wearing less clothing. <laughs> But yes, she's definitely Hot Pants 2.0. That's okay. At least she doesn't look just like Ida, so. <laughs> Receptionist? Seems just... See, I, I introduced Tatar properly. I think. Everybody's dancing. Have I been there? Probably. So this, this should be the last stream that I have to do like a like last time in Eorzea. Um, 
So hopefully from now on, we will actually... Oh. Okay, we're gonna go to the Hawthorne Hunt. It is the special sword from Bugman Primal. He's really cool. He's got like six arms and swords. Ravana! Yes. It's the special Ravana sword. My uh my friends made it for me while we were getting mounts, which by the way, hold on. This person has a like levitating motorcycle. That's amazing. It's not even a motorcycle. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is a motorcycle. Is that Cloud's weird motorcycle? I think it might be. Um So I have oops. So I have an inventory button. I don't oh I guess I can just I guess I can just do this. I got a new whistle and I don't think I've used it yet. Uh maybe I have. No, wrong button. Okay, mount guide. I got a new mount. I got a new Okay. This one. Yes. We got a new we got a new so the joke is they're all ponies regardless of whether they're horses or not and I go and get new of these these special mounts by playing with my friends oh look at how sparkly oh oh you're sparkly yes this is this is Thornton uh, we got to fight the night of the round a bunch today um, clearly you just need a bunch of over leveled friends who will run these boss fights. Oh, look at how pretty! Look at that! That's so pretty. Who will run these boss fights unsynced with you over and over again while you die and get scraped off the floor until you, uh, got lost. Until you get the whistle and can summon the new the new pony. But yeah, so, so I call them ponies and they're my, my, my pony adventure club. My friends that I get the ponies with. God, I love the fate music. Oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. Okay. Uh, there's Alphano. Hello, they say. Let's talk to everybody else first. Ah. Uh. Oh, she's talking about Ilbird. Yes, I think it was his plan. He, he sacrificed himself to uh, summon the unspeakable evil. So things are bad, is what they're saying. All right, let's do it. Yes. Let's, let's go. We're, 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 we're going into Imperial territory. This is new. It's like completely new areas I've never been. Look at this. Yes. Oh, I'm glad they're doing this. Cause I don't know my way around. You can kind of make out what the places are, even though the script isn't technically in Roman letters. It's close enough. I remember crossing the border, standing in Girabania once more. Me and my fellow scions, the warrior of light among us. So Lisa's going to be our storyteller for this. That makes sense. Oh, those were Behind his guardians. Us, Bailsar's wall cutting the land in two. Freedom on one side, tyranny on the other. Tyranny and the promise of a new beginning. But one that could only be bought with flames and blood. So 
this is what I was talking about. They had to, she, I knew she was going to be carrying a bunch of the story and they couldn't have done that with the version of the character that we knew. We're in a completely new place. I like don't know this place at all. I don't know this music at all. Everything here is new. Cause I know Dosmea. Hi Dosmea. <laughs> Yeah, I don't fully get what's going on with the Gridanians. Like, I kind of know it in theory, but it hasn't really ever been a thing that they've gone into in a way that, like, registered as, like, you should feel this way about it. Like, Eorzea is not actually a place of freedom. It's not a place of tyranny. But, like, the situation in Ulda is not good. The, the treatment of refugees is not good. Um, like... I can guess Gridania has has its own problems too, so like And then I don't even know what Limsa is like because I don't spend any time there. Alright, so now we can teleport here. Oh wow, there's a storm brewing. You can hear the sound effects of it. I'm gonna wander around and talk to people. Goodness. Yeah, Skeleton Ghost. I, I like that too. Like, I feel like none of the places in this game are idealized. Not really. Um, like, at the moment, I'm most hopeful about Ishgard, about Foundation, but that's only because we worked super hard on dealing with their issues. Whereas the others haven't, either haven't even started dealing with their issues or are, um, we'll die. <laughs> So it's interesting we've got these bagpipes going because there were a lot of bagpipes in Heaven's Word. Um, in Heaven's Word, um, I've, I've heard that um, the composer drew inspiration. Well, that, that each, not just the composer, not just the music, but just in general. I'd heard that um, each uh, expansion has um, has uh, like an elemental association and heaven's word as you can probably tell from the name heaven like it's it's the air on elemental one so the music has a lot of like bagpipes and other things that are very very airy um and uh i'm not a huge fan i feel like bagpipes are best used um sparingly <laughs> so i felt there's a little bit too much bagpipes for me in the soundtrack um with heaven's word so it's interesting for me to find some bagpipes here i think that this is going to be Fire is my guess. We'll see. I don't know how that'll play out in the instrumentation. Um, but having different instruments um, for the music will make the different locations have different feelings um, and, and really reinforce that you're in a different, a different part of the world. Because Foundation, the city in Ishgard, um, like the moment you step in there, everything is different. It's a very, very different place. So like, I don't know. Kind of getting a sense for what's going on. Yes, please tell me these things. Okay. Yeah, I saw the Ishgardians. They're very distinctive. So they don't wear raincoats. <laughs> they wear they wear, wear uh, chain mail. Hmm. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, so if it has a, if it has like, if the name sounds Roman, it's imperial. So Castrum means it's an imperial place. Um. Okay, so the king of Alamigo. There've been some really awful leaders in Alamigo. Like apparently, the king of Alamigo, the most recent king, was so bad that some people actually welcomed imperial invasion because they were like, surely they will be better than he was. Um, so that's part of why there's bad blood between Alamigo and the rest of Eorzea.
Oh man, Ravon is excited to finally be doing this. Good, Alphano. I'm glad that you can feel good about your contributions to this. Oh, Alice. All right, Ravon. General, sir. So there's going to be some trouble here. We're going to sneak into Alamigo and make contact with the resistance. Yes. Here is our Sid. Every Final Fantasy has a Sid. Ours is a... Um, he defected from the Empire. He is... Uh, Technological whiz, of course. He built us airships, of course. That's what SIDS do. And SIDS... SIDS stalker. Did Nero stick around? I don't remember. SID has a stalker. <laughs> from school who's who's freakishly obsessed with him in an uncomfortable way but the game knows it so it's all right this is not good we should definitely find it yes nero has major inferiority complex All right. That's dramatic and new, I think. I don't think that's... Because we used to have a bit of the dragon song melody. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. No, zoom out. Okay. I, I wasn't until you said that, but now that you mention it, I think I might. Yes, super. The problem with super weapons is that once they get in the wrong person hand, wrong person's hands, everyone is in trouble. Okay, so they're basically like, what they're doing here is they're like, so that's a plot thread, and it's a really important one, and really we should prioritize it. So we'll put someone competent on it, so you can, you can forget it for now and do other things because we have too many other things going on. Okay. The bridge will be significant. All right, let's do it. Multiple factions. I haven't heard that actually, Elise. They may have mentioned it, but if they did, it was probably in 2.0. So running around in this game is a lot of it's basically a lot of... Okay, so I can't teleport anywhere here because I haven't been to most of the locations. So, okay, we've got a bird. I can't fly here because I haven't been here enough to fly. You have to, like, get all of the things to be able to fly. So you can't fly until you have... Oh, well, these things are actually going to be at my level. You you can't fly until you've basically finished an area. They... they oh, oh, oh. No, no, I don't want to fight you. Go away. I'm used to being so overleveled that things don't attack me. So I have to like, take it seriously. Let's take a look around here. So this does look a lot like the rest of the shroud to me. And the music kind of makes me think of the rest of the shroud, the area around Vidania, which is the part of Eorze that this is closest to. When they're like, it doesn't look that much different. It doesn't look much different. Also, thank you all for who are... I see that you're hanging out with me. Um, the few of you who are in chat. Um, I'm not trying to talk to her. Okay. At <laughs> the risk of upsetting the cartographic fraternity. <laughs> Kyle. 
Kryle's like, I'm gonna make the map makers mad, but this name doesn't make any sense. She's really funny. Oh no, Disnea, I'm sorry your internet crashed. Yes, it does, now that you pointed out, look like the shroud, but with less trees. Oh, okay, see, I don't, I don't know enough Latin, apparently, to have figured that. Okay, we're gonna go tromp through some water. Oh, now I'm on a, oh, it's my super special pony. So there, I sh should not have this pony. Should we fight these? Wait, this is not the fate music. No, they made a new fate music. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? The fate music is like my favorite. I love the fate music. It's too good. It's like unfairly good. Maybe that's why they got rid of it. They were like, every other song in the game is going to feel inferior if we keep that around, so we better get rid of it. I really like all the storm brewing sounds that we hear. I don't know if that's just because I happened to be here during a weather event or if that's the stormy part of Stormblood. Okay. I should probably get those at some point. Oh, look at this. This definitely doesn't look like Redania. That is good timing then. Yeah, look at that. It's cool. Oh, 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 oh. Is that one or is that a bad guy? I think that's a bad guy, isn't it? That's a bad guy. 150 yalms to the south. Okay, we'll get there then. I think. Yes. Unless this is where we came from, which it might be. No, it's not. Hold on. I want to get... I want to get this thing. Because if I don't get this now, I'm going to have to get it later. So we're going to get the things that once we get them all, we'll be able to... to 80 yams to the east. This way's east. Right. Right. There it is! I found it! Okay, cool. These. So we, we want to get all of these. When we get all of these in an area, then we can fly, which makes things much less annoying. Okay, the next one is far away, so we're gonna go back up here. Man! That sure is an ominous looking place, isn't it? We're gonna just... Dum -dum 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 -dum. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. Just me on my pony. I have my pony set to random. So I have a very special, extremely rare pony that I got with my pony hunting club. Because they, they didn't realize, they thought it was the regular pony that, that we were trying to get for me. But instead it was the like 0.5% of a chance pony. So that's why I, as a very inexperienced player, had a nightmare. Which is very rare. Alright. Not like I'm leading monsters here or anything. Yes, I have Nightmare. <laughs> People are like, why do you have that, Lauren? I'm like, I, I, I'm I, sorry. I would have given it to them if I could. Okay. Hello, Ischola. Sorry, we're just going to keep talking to everybody. In case uh, they have things to say. But right now all they're doing is talking about the river. Of course, Alice has to give her brother a hard time. Lise is doing the uh, the lookout emote. I recognize that one. I think it's lookout. Maybe it's overlook. And I love the sound of a storm. Yes, I was actually. <laughs> this is literally the thing that I was like, that's awfully ominous looking. I think this is the one. Oh, this is the bridge that they said was strategic. Boy, they don't want us crossing that, do they? My goodness. So 
So she's still got some, like, the same, like, she still talks kind of the same as she did before, but... Oh, I should probably get on my pony. Alright. Hi, Jasmia. I see you made it back and your internet is back. Let us... going the right way? I think I am. Oh, hold on. That's pretty far. Maybe? I don't even know which way I'm going. I'm stuck. Is that a... Oh, I thought those were piranha plants. Okay. You are about to witness my utter inability to find where I'm going. So I spent a not inconsiderable amount of this game having friends literally leading me everywhere because I I could not find my way around. Now I've gotten better, partly because foundation is much easier to find your way around in than the other cities because they got better at level design and city design. Too. Okay, I think I'm finally going the right way. I think I am. Hold on, we're gonna... We're gonna zoom all the way out. That'll probably make it a little easier. I learned how to do that recently. I'm very excited. Am I going the right way? I think I'm going the right way. I think. Hold on. Oh, we're close though. Southeast, huh? Let's go find that. Ah! I can't go in a straight line though. Hopefully my controller's not having problems. That's happened before. This is southeast, right? Oh, cool. My controller is having problems. The west, we went too far. This is west. This is west, right? This is west. Meanwhile, Dismay is over there punching things. 39 yalms to the north. This way is north. Okay. We go here. So these things are often like hidden like under or on top of things. No, I want to get up the mountain thing, I bet. I bet that's what I want. Let me climb the thing! Let me climb the thing! Let me climb the thing. Okay, we're gonna figure this out. This music definitely sounds like a bad thing happened here. Which makes sense. This place has had an invasion. And an occupation. And generally not good times for anyone. The Empire is not very kind. Which, I mean, Empires seldom are. Wait, 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 nip, 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 nip. It's right there, it's right there, there. It's right there, I found it. Yes, it's gonna be much less annoying than riding around trying to find them later, I think. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get back on our... Okay, so this is way to the northwest. Hello! This way. Plop. You take fall damage, which is very fun. Try to see how much fall damage you can take. Because unless you're in combat, you won't die to fall damage. So you try to see if you can find a place that you can fall off of and have one health left. It's very exciting. These are the things that you do, okay? I don't know why they're what you do, but they are. Why am I a shiny bird? Man, I've been so busy trying to find my way around. That I haven't even seen the wall because I was going the wrong way but you're right it is huge right over there all right friends ah <laughs> they only say are we there yet She's the one that I say is going to grow up in this, in this expansion, I think. All right. Ralgar, that name sounds familiar. Is there, is it, is it, is it an illusion? Yes. Okay. Glamour prisms are what we use to make special outfits so that you can wear the good armor but look like whatever you want to look like. Oh, yes, yes, I remember her. She's the one that, I, that they mentioned earlier who'd been seriously wounded but then was okay. 
Okay. Do they know that she's Lise and not Ida? Oh, that sounded like a that sounded like a, a prism being broken, so we can see it. Aha! Very nice. And now I'm on the dragon pony. This is the dad of all dragons. Ralgar, that name sounds familiar. Hmm. I remember the old stories. How the Breaker of Worlds came down from on high and cleft the earth with a single blow. Oh, that's where they did their fighting in the intro video. Ralgar's Reach. A holy place, and a fitting home for the resistance, for the brave and the true, the loyal sons and daughters of Alamigo. They were waiting for us there, men and women whose souls still cried out for what was lost, for what could be ours again. They're, um, the fact that they have those, those, like, hoods make me think of the statues in the place that the, um, Viceroy is now occupying. These are characters we're going to get to know. I'm excited to get to know more characters. Conrad! Minago, we've met her before. Hello, Minago. Yes! She's super cute. It's your friend, Lise. They must have some very powerful wizards if he's Tola is impressed. <laughs> okay. The scholar approves. Hello, Mephrid. Oh, you're cool? I probably have met that one before, too. Have I met this one before? No, I think I would remember this guy if I'd met him. Okay. All right. And where'd we go? This place is definitely not full of players. It's like only us, like nobody else is here but us. Oh no, there's a couple of others. Here's somebody else. A bunch of stuff that somebody's gonna have to explain to me because they don't know what any of that is. Great, good. Oh look, there's another player. No, that's not another player. I gotta attune to these. Okay. Oh, look at this! They've got a bunch of arch... That's a Naga! Does that mean that they've made... F so, in Eorzea proper, there are the beast Man, the beast tribes and then the like civilized people and this is a distinction of course that the civilized people make and it leads to treating the beast men basically like animals instead of like people if the alamegans are friends with their local beast men tribe like that gives like huge points in their favor i mean even if it's just that we're uniting against the empire that is more than can be said for like I mean, I guess the Gridanians and the Sylphs have an understanding, but, like, nobody else, I'm sorry, nobody else treats the beast Beastmen well. Like, just, like, they, they just don't. That's, that's one of the things that is, I think they're aware of it, I think the game writers are aware of it, but it is somewhat frustrating. Because they make a point of the fact that, the, that you get involved with and talk to. 
the beast drives. Hello, Chocobo! I dog oh, kicked me. Yeah, so basically the the Eorzeans like take the take the, the beast tribes lands, they like bug them, like, she's generally not good. And they're like, oh my god, they keep summoning primals to kill us. They're the worst. It's, a, uh, it's not my favorite thing, and it's something that I hope that they'll address more. Here's my big electric pony. We're just gonna go this way, because why not? Oops, I keep trying to Zoro. Okay. I don't know. Where am I trying to get to? At this point, I'm just kind of wandering. Oh good, well I'm glad Ishtola does that. That doesn't surprise me. She, uh, she tells it like it is. Okay, hold on. I think I need the big teleporter here still. Starfall. God, this is cool looking. So this symbol, I don't know if this is the symbol of, well, it's something significant. This is definitely an altar of some sort. Jump in the water. Oh, okay. Fine, my electric pony doesn't want to swim. All right, well then I guess I'm gonna swim without my pony. Let's just see if I can figure out how to get out of the water. Okay, I figured it out, folks. I, ah, I'm going the right way. All right, so as you can see, there are not very many players here. That's interesting. I assume this is not a hub city, so people don't come here a lot. Planning operations, yes, it does look that way. Okay, so I have met this guy. Oh no, it's perfectly realistic, Blue Glass, and I like that, that there's, there's this flaw of the people that we ally with, but... Allow me to welcome you once more to Raga's Reach, our humble headquarters. But Foundation had people running around all the time. My name I is guess, Conrad Kemp, I guess this isn't a and I have the dubious city. honor of overseeing operations here. I guess we'll see what happens when we get to the, whatever the hub city here is going to be. It is a pleasure to meet you, Master Kemp. I am Alfino Leveilleur of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, as are my comrades. Before I speak about our purpose here, pray allow me to thank you for sheltering Ida, forgive me, Lise, and Papalimo at great risk to yourselves. No, no, there's no need for that. They risk their necks for us enough times. It was the least we could do. That's good. I'm glad we're starting off on the right I, here. I wanted to, um, I mean, about the mask and... Oh, she's going to, she, I was wondering if they were going to address the fact that she's been basically pretending to be someone else. And what that means. Ah, oh, don't fret over that. You're not the first person to take up arms against the Empire under a false name. We'd do the same if we had any sense. <laughs> My condolences for your lost child. Because everybody knew her sister who she was impersonating. Papalimo laid down his life to save us to give us a chance to make a better future for ourselves. There will never be a better time to drive the Garleans from our lands. But we have to take the lead on this. We can't leave it to fanatics like Ilbert. More than a few of our people were taken in by his promises. Followed him all the way to the wall. Good men and women who never came back. Yes, because he sacrificed literally everyone, including himself, to have enough death to summon a very powerful primal. When Monago told good. us what had happened, how the bastard had made sacrifices of them for his twisted ritual, by Rolger it filled me with an unholy fury. But what's done is done. Best we can do now is see that it wasn't all in vain. Yeah. That is why we are here today, sir to see that some good comes of this tragedy. I don't remember Wilred. On behalf of the Eorzean Alliance, 
we do hereby extend a formal offer of military assistance to the Alamegan resistance. See, like, this is this is actually a good way of doing it. Like, when they're like, we won't go in there unless the people themselves want us there. Um, and we are offering our assistance to you. Seems like the way to do it. Do you now? Well, go on then. I'm sure there's more to it than that. <laughs> you had to know that was coming, sir. So that's the way of it, eh? The Alliance, hoping to avoid a direct confrontation with the superior forces of the Empire, wishes to engage them by proxy with our vastly inferior ones. It could be worse. My comrades and I must confer on your proposal. A moment, if you please. All right. Of course, Master Kemp. Take all the time you require. to stand on top of desks, I'm sorry. Oh! Oh, yes! I actually think I remember that, kid, now that you say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes, I had actually figured. I was like, it seems strange that least knows her way around here. How come she knows? And I probably should have said this because I'm supposed to be talking about my thoughts. Did that person just... Did that person just ran off at a behemoth? They did. And then there's a car. Oh, that's one of us. <laughs> no, um, and I, I should probably articulate these things instead of just keeping them in my head. But it seemed a little strange to me that Lise, who ostensibly had not crossed the the wall like I'm like why is Lise the one who's showing us the way she doesn't know does she has it's been a while hasn't it um but so yeah finding it like because when she's like oh I know these ones it's like really do you and the answer is yes she does okay interesting if they do then we'll figure it out then all right alpha no what are we gonna do? Oh, I already did that. This frequently happens. I'm like, oh, I should look around the town before I go and progress the story. And then they're like, okay, now, and before you progress the story, you, in order to progress the story, you have to look around the town, so. It does blow glass, thank you. I was trying to figure out what it sounded like. Cause I'm like, it's not Dragon Song, but it's something that's familiar. And I'm like, is there a song from this game? I'm like, I feel like it's not this game. Da -da -da -da. What is it? I'm walking through the night. Right? That's so interesting. I'm sure it's not intentional. I highly doubt Toby Fox has ever touched this game or vice versa. Um, I mean, this game hasn't touched Toby Fox. <laughs> ah, sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna go poke our noses. I just poked my nose, but I guess I'll poke my nose some more. Yes, please show me around. So I, I put together a glamour that I thought would be appropriate for this area. I'm with you in the dark, okay. Yeah. That's that's close to what I was trying to sing, wasn't it? I don't even remember what I was trying to sing. Perhaps Deltarune secretly takes place. In the world of Final Fantasy XIV, which isn't actually Eorzea. For the longest time, I thought Eorzea was the name of the world instead of the continent. I was mistaken. Hmm. I don't know who those are. Oh, yeah, Megs? <laughs> I didn't know that, but I, I, I am, I imagine that 
I imagine that the music would be the case, so that wouldn't actually explain the similarity of the melody, but that would disprove my, my assumption. I should not have made an assumption. Okay. Ananta. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, no, this is great. I love that she's pointing out things that I've already started to notice and she's giving more context. Like, that's good. Yes! That is the only way we're going to be able to defeat the Empire. Is if we work together. Have I? Have I? I don't think I have. Yes, I'm going to attune to this. Yes. yes, no, Toby Fox is definitely a Final Fantasy VI fan. Um, oh, okay. Now I can teleport here. Um, but, uh, but there's a difference between having played a classic Super Nintendo RPG and playing an MMO. Which I admittedly... Maybe I assume that other people... Ah, oh, there you go, Don Land. They're actually secretly related. You can tell because they have the same surname. I know that's not actually it. But I... I, I I'm playing with the just... Alright. Tell me a little bit about this location. Breaker of Worlds. Ah, here we go. Look at this. They're giving me history. I will try not to forget it this time. Yes, Spikey. That's that's the thing. There's there's so much more content to this, and it's much less just playable. Like you can pick up. I'm granted. One could argue that the Super Nintendo game has not necessarily aged super well. So that might be a point against its playability, but it's still much more, I think, easily accessible than getting into the third expansion of an MMO. Hell's open, heaven's weep. Huh. Storm of Blood. <laughs> it's melodramatic, but that's not a problem, Lise. I appreciate that they're giving me... They're giving me bits of world building here and context and history that I need because I didn't pay that much attention to a realm of born. Um, but even if I had, it's been a while. Did I talk to you already? Probably. Hello. Well, that's a fancy chocobo. Ah, oh, they do have indoor spaces. Look at all this! Oh, hello, Baronard. Oh, I like this. Kryl and Ischola have come to uh, to try to heal what they can. Because since we're here, we might as well help people. Oh, look at you and your shiny, shiny potions. Hello. Too much to worry about, so I don't... That's actually very healthy. I like the sense of scale here, because this is a temple. It's not meant to be used for what it is, so everything is kind of small. Alright, hold on, where's my chocobo? It's not my chocobo. No, it's not a chocobo. I used to say chocobo when I was a kid, but I have acclimated. Emmett! You have a Santa bear. 
All right, so let's get back on our mount and see if we can find where. Where is she? Watcher. Yes. Oh, this tells you what the weather is everywhere. Okay. You can tell I spend a lot of time talking to them. Yes, at some point I will do more job quests. Um, have I attuned to you? No, I haven't. I didn't think I had. But for now, doing Red Mage is enough for me. Where are you? Where are you? Where? Where? Oh, there you are. I'm just blind. Or twin. We have some twins. We have twins. Mm, that's actually probably a good plan. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I already did that. Okay, so it looks different. That's interesting. I would not have noticed. I, I don't know what about it is different. Minty Leaf. I, I'm sorry. Like, there aren't as many people, but I'm still going to comment on their names. Hello, twins. I don't know what a sutler is. Ah. Oh, I have to pick a thing. None of these are things I can use, so I guess I'll get this. I would say is approving of the shopping. Hmm. <laughs> All right. We've looked around. We healed some people. We learned a little bit about history. Very important stuff. And now we will find out I assume they're gonna say yes. Maybe we have to do something for them to earn their trust. If this were like a normal game thing, but this... I don't know that this game would do that. That's maybe too JRPG for them. Like <laughs> 30 bear butts to get right, Dumbland. Thank you all for waiting. We have reached a consensus. He sounds sad. I, Conrad Kemp, do hereby accept the Aeorsian Alliance's proposal. You must understand, however, that our cooperation comes with certain caveats. Good night, Blue Glass. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you being Those here. Those caveats being. I take no joy in this, just so you know. Were it within my power, I'd offer you more assistance. But the resistance is far more fragmented than you realize. The men and women in my care belong to but one of many factions. So we're going to have to uh, gather the factions together, presumably. Which is reasonable. Simply put, I can only speak for the people of Rolga's Reach. Now. I have every intention of appealing to the others, and I expect many will agree, but it will take time, and I cannot guarantee universal support. Understood. I shall see that the Alliance is under no misapprehensions as to your position. So just imagine how Alphano would have taken this, and what he would have said, how he would have responded. The beginning of Heaven's Word. Much obliged. But that's not the whole of it. As you can imagine, the loss of those who cast their lot with the Griffin left us short on numbers. Some of our most trusted veterans died at the wall, and we've had to fill their posts with the young and inexperienced. Frankly, everything's in a right bloody mess. What will we be doing from there, though? Oh, we'd be more than happy to help you get back on your feet. If we're going to work together, we'll be doing ourselves a favor. <laughs> well, there's no shortage of work to be done, that's for sure. We're in dire need of new blood, too. Ishtola and I could lend a hand in the infirmary. 
From what I saw, they could do with a few more healers. Very well. I, for my part, shall return to the Rising Stones. I'm certain there are others among the Scions who would welcome the opportunity to fight for Alamegan liberation. So in addition to accepting Eorzeans, like the Eorzean army, we are um, also... Is there anything else we can do to help? We personally are going to have to fill in their ranks. I mean, I, I thought that that kind of went without saying that we were going to fill in their ranks, but... uh. I had something else in mind for you, Lot. Monago and Mephrid will tell you more. Yeah, so you notice they, they took Alphano out of the story now because he doesn't need to be here. He was doing... He's doing fine. Like, his response to this was so worlds away from previous situations that you can tell how much he's grown and changed. He doesn't need the character growth that's going to happen here. So let's see what's going to happen with Alice. Understood. We won't let you down. I like those gloves. Yes. Okay. I mean, we wanted to give you the chance to say yes or no. Ah. Uh, that is silly looking, and I'm not going to wear it. Okay. I. I don't know. Ah. I have a compass. We were already doing that. All right, so it is currently right around 10 o'clock. I can continue going. I have no absolute need to continue or to stop. Um, this feels like this could be a good stopping point. For, um, for our first stream here. I, I don't know, not a whole ton has happened at this point that um, that leaves me, like, like we're still building and pulling threads together at this point. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting because in, uh, in the parts that we just played, there was, I feel, a little less downtime because they didn't really have to ramp up the entire time. We were either winding down or it was like constant like stuff, 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 which makes sense. They had put a lot of pieces on the table to deal with. Um, and they had these like little short stories, whereas like now we're getting into a novel. And so you can take your time setting the stage, which unfortunately I suppose for like streaming a game in this, in this way is going to mean there's a little more downtime, uh, especially because it's not like there's necessarily combat, regularly wandering around combat um, to kind of give action besides just me like talking to characters so like let me know what you think of this like i'm fine either way but would you be interested in seeing combat would you be interested in seeing us participating in optional fates and things like that um like i i would i would appreciate um if, if any of you have feedback, suggestions, that sort of thing. Because as much as I've spent a few streams now playing this game, um, it's, it's, a, it's a different experience um, and not something that I have like five years of experience doing. So um, I, I, I'm doing this for an audience for a reason. Um, and, uh, and hopefully this can be something that you will all enjoy. Um, I might go ahead and, and shut down if, if, if nobody has any special requests, like keep going just a little bit longer um, because I would like to, uh, I would like to feel like we're starting like next week. We've got, we've got a plan. We're not like in the middle of tasks um, <laughs> because I suspect that there's going to be a sequence of things with these two um, that it might take a while. However, like if, if there's anything in particular, like, oh, keep a little bit longer, like I, I can, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, so the thing is the fates and side quests wouldn't be to try to level up. Like I'm I'm super not worried about levels. I'm mostly wondering as far as um the entertainment experience of going with me on this adventure. <laughs> if people would like to see that, especially because I know some of the fates do actually have like little like world building things going on. Like, oh, we can fight the like help the rebels, that sort of thing. Um so I don't know. 
just just something something to think about they have good music at least in, in the in the previous expansions I don't I guess if they're not using the fate song in this one I'll, I'll get over it eventually um, it's just it's one of my favorite songs in the game so far um, but <laughs> that's all right careless dragon um, because I generally don't take side quests unless they're blue um, because they don't they don't necessarily have enough story but if people say like this is a side quest that would be interesting um, I would be I would be totally down so I, I, I appreciate yeah if you wouldn't mind just me like I appreciate that input because I know I know a lot of the people who are watching this are people who uh, people who know this game um, do do we have like, I think we've got a couple of folks here who may be stuck around who don't who don't know this game but I, I, I guess I should have probably asked that before I gave my little background explanation thing just to see if that was necessary but I knew we had at least one person who didn't know the game um, anyway yeah thank you all so much for joining um, I feel like I'm still kind of maybe finding my footing a little bit with this, but I appreciate you all being here. Um, and we'll we'll get through uh, we'll get through the intro, the, like continue to get through the intro of this and see if we can get into the real meat of things. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. Thank you. Well, I, I'm glad you had fun. I had fun. Um, and uh, so, just in case anyone wants to follow, oops, uh. I've got a Discord server where you can talk about spoilers and games that I'm playing. Um, I've also got social media where I update on things. Um, so if you want to like catch up on some of my previous adventures, I've got them up on YouTube. Um, yeah. Thank you all so much. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you tomorrow at 7 Eastern is Hades. Saturday, I don't know what Saturday stream is going to be this week. It's a mystery. Maybe it'll be music. Tuesday, Sweet Odin 2. Wednesday, Stormblood. Thursday, Hades. Um, so I'll see you then. Take care. Have a good night. Stay safe. Stay healthy um, and be good to yourselves. All right. Bye.